piece that I know Terry likes. Is that cool? Yes. Right. <laughs> Anyone in here a fan of Nina Simone? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Me too. <laughs> in memory of Eunice Kathleen Wayman. Some of the songs I sang I would have changed because they hurt my career. Mississippi Goddamn, all the controversial ones. There is no reason to sing those songs. Nothing is happening. There is no civil rights movement. Everybody is gone. There aren't any leaders. Indeed, there aren't. But I ran away. Nina Simone, 1985. I'd be lying if I said I loved you while you were still full of fire. Your last track recorded 10 years before I bought my first album. So celebrated my first birthday the day you cursed your first freedom song. Your death slipped through my life as quietly as I burgeoned into yours, and now I conjure your concert halls in my headphones lamenting my late arrival. Mm. I don't know what kind of ignorant I'd be if I had never heard you sing, had never heard the whole of your voice take the back of my throat, make me cry like I tasted Jim Crow. Hard to imagine the breadth of the hollow had you chosen silence, your crescendo. So encompassing, indignation shows its belly. Crack notes and curse words, now the sweetest serenade to the ugliest of American traditions. Goddamn, goddamn, goddamn the ones that would have silenced you. Turn muse into martyr, heavy-handed on the keys, heavy neck bone, make a girl work hard to hold her shoulders up. They tried to crown you crazy, priestess of sorrow, made famous for public breakdowns and wielding loaded shotguns. How did you pronounce the diagnosis? Manic depressive ain't hardly dignified, but indigo you can tap your toes to, throw your arms up for the ride. So high, might even touch the dawn, all light and wings and unabashed volume. Do you know how you feel, cacophonous pendulum? Hold on tight for the swing, for the hold on tight for the swing back. Low notes drag the tongue across the bass cleft. All the best intentions curl and choke Ooh. before they swallow. I can't pretend that we are living post-revolution that your freedom songs have broken down any borders outside of my own body. But I was born divided, and my Civil War drafted treaties in the wake of your refrain. I'm only sorry I didn't get the chance to tell you every one of us black girls found our name in your tenor. I want to line up an army of women, Aunt Sarah, Sephronia, Sweet Thing, Peaches, Kyria, all of us bucktooth, bold, and armored with your music. Want to show you how tall we stand, how loudly we sing off key in tribute to your bravado. I wish I could have met you in 1945, your first recital, nine years before you changed your name for stardom, 15 before Langston and Baldwin would call you friend before bus boycott and lunch counter, church bombing and fire hydrant, before anyone talked about Mississippi. Just a 12-year-old color girl and a piano in front of an all-white auditorium refusing to play until her parents could be seated in the front row. Eunice, I would tell you, you just hold out till you're ready. Every note you play is worth the wait. That, that does uh, work for women across the globe, which um, is cool in some ways when I have political reservations about the UN, you know, there's complications, whatever, Western-dominated imperialism, blah, blah, blah. Um, and, um, but I was like, yeah, I want to do a high-profile event. And I was like, okay, so I got to read this piece. It's, it's for this event. They were honoring this woman, Yvette Milongo, who does, uh, she's Congolese, and she does work in the Congo. I don't know if you know, but Congo is the rape, rape capital of the world. Uh, women are being brutally raped um, and mutilated daily by the minute. Um, so I was like, okay, I'll write a piece, but it's for the UN, so I'll write it like real neat and tidy and clean and like just a, your general like, rah, rah, women, yeah, kind of poem, right? So they wanted a week in advance. I never write anything a week in advance, mm -hmm. but I did, and I sent it to them, and I was like, this is like the cleanest shit I've ever written, so it'll be fine. And they send it back, and they're like, oh, we love it, we're so happy you're here, there's just, couple of lines that maybe you could change. 
yeah. You know, they're really uncomfortable with like these couple of lines, and I was like, Are you fucking shitting me? It's it's like the most like easy poem ever. So this poem I'm gonna read for you is the raw, uncut, yeah. <laughs> too hardcore for the UN. <laughs> um, you're gonna hear it and be like, what? So then I'm gonna have pop quiz to see which if you can guess which lines. So listen carefully. <laughs> Don't tell your daughter she is beautiful if you have never told her how smart she is. Have never praised her for the caliber of her brilliance muffled so often under so much makeup and etiquette. It is such a waste that over half the world's children are daughters and all we ever teach them about their bodies is how to make them pretty. One in six American women are sexually assaulted in their lifetimes. Pretty will not shield them. In the last 12 years, 200,000 were brutally raped in the Democratic Republic of the Congo alone, and these are just the numbers we've been told. We spend our money on pink things, skin lightening cream, starved or force feed, teach that good girls listen first, do not speak before spoken to, hold their tongues, know their place, but for every demure princess and dutiful president's wife we hold up as idol, there is a raucous voice that refuses to be silenced, and Angela Davis, Castor Semenya, Yvette Mal Longo, and for every victim, fragmented beyond recognition, there is a woman who picks up the pieces and constructs a new beginning. We women learn this young and out of necessity. Every mother's daughter is heavy with history, loaded with gunpowder and ready to be set aflame. What use do we have for a slight waist and slender wrist when there is so much work to be done? Beautiful is a hand held out in solidarity, the raising of so many fists. Beautiful is Tahir Square, Egypt, hijab and picket sign, united in cheer, chanting down a dictator. Beautiful is the women of the DRC whose bodies bear the brunt of genocide, daily look into the face of death and demand the right to live. Beautiful is messy, tangled, stained, and unapologetic, not skin deep, but just beneath the muscles torn and ready to rebuild. Yeah. So pop quiz. Who, who thinks they know what the, what the lines are? There's two lines. Yeah. The statistics? Not the statistics, because that was from their own website. <laughs> yes. The muscles torn? Not the muscles torn. Yes. Do they not want you to talk about it? Then. I was afraid it was going to be her, but no, they let me talk about Angela Davis. Oh. I don't know why. Maybe they don't know who she is. I don't know. <laughs> um, yes. Ready to be set aflame? Yes. Yeah. Um, so this line, every mother's daughter is heavy with history, loaded with gunpowder, ready to be set in flame. The woman on the phone is like, um, I don't know if you intended this, but when I read that, I thought, suicide bomber? Oh, and you have to give her the benefit of the doubt. She works for the UN. I think she probably deals with suicide bombers much more often than I ever do. So it's a different context, right? So it's like, okay, no, that's not what I meant. I'll, I'll change it. I don't remember what I changed it to. It was softer, whatever. Okay, there's one more line. One other line. Anybody want to guess? This one really ruffled my feathers. Ruffled my feathers? No. I'll tell you. Um, beautiful is Tahir Square, Egypt. Hijab and picket sign, united in cheer, chanting down a dictator. I was like, you got a problem with Egypt? Excuse me? The first, the, 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 the most recent nonviolent revolution that was successful with your problem? With your no, it was picket signs. You know why? Because the benefit was in one of the hotels downtown that is being picketed because they're anti-union and they didn't want to pick a sign. Oh. Guess what, motherfuckers, you already did. Right? <laughs> but I changed it anyways. Yes, I compromised myself. This is the beginning of the end. There is. <laughs> So there's my funny story. Um,